Welcome or welcome back. This is Pair 12 Knitting. I'm Jennifer and this is a knitting podcast all about knitting, yarny adventures and travel. Thank you so much for joining me today and so excited that you're here with me. We are featuring a travel video. This is travel knitting or knitting knitting with travel. Um, we are going to do so somewhat of an updated version of my travel knitting tips. Um, but this is just in general, I think for me, really efficient and effective travel methods that I've come up with over the years while traveling. If you have not watched my most recent, last two recent episodes, um, you may not know that we are traveling out soon um, and we are heading off to Norway, the motherland of knitting and wool and sheep, and I couldn't be more excited. Um, so this video is help, helping me actually plan and prep even better, I feel. Um, my objective, of course, is for you to take away something from this with travel tips for knitting, specifically travel knitting, or in general, just helping you prep and prepare um, so you can have a more joyous journey as you are traveling, hopefully in your future. And with knitting, we are gonna get into how I've prepared my things that I'm bringing with me. So let's, let's get started with number one. I'm gonna put this on so you can see and be careful of my mic. Um, first of all, nothing is sponsored, everything is purchased. Um, I have a very fresh updated version of the fanny pack that I used to carry. The fanny pack I used to carry while traveling really served a great purpose. I still have it, I'm still considering bringing it for my runs, but it's very sporty. It was from Lululemon and uh, I, would, I would wear it on my body at the airport and of course while traveling because I'm not a purse porter. Um, I don't own a lot of purses and they're not my comfort zone of what I like to bring with me. Um, so I have this fancy fanny pack. Um, this was purchased from Lover & Haas, which is a independent maker um, and leather worker in Calgary, Canada. Um, this is a fabulous purchase, was not inexpensive. This was a bit of an investment, um, but I am in love. Still smells like leather. Um, I got this about, I would say month, a month and a half ago maybe. And it's a really beautiful, um, craftsmanship, I'd say, of leather work. Very solid, and uh, yeah, I've I've worn it a bunch already. If you uh, if you've seen my Instagram bits, um, so within this, because this is on my body, it's on my person, I'm feeling really secure with whatever is in here. Um, I would keep two things as I'm flying through the airport running through the airport walking. Um, of course, I have my passport, and this I always carry the two passports of myself and love my life. Um, that lives on one side, on the other side in the zippy pouch is cash if we happen to be carrying cash at all. Usually not, um, but if we do, it lives in here. Uh, among that, I have my wallet that I bring around with me. This is just an everyday wallet, and um, I would, before we head out, I would take away things that I don't need for international travel. Um, so it would only house like my visa, a driver's license. Um, I might bring my Ontario health card for good measure, but probably really not needed. So let's face it. So everything else gets pulled out. That is what I would be wearing on my front. Um, on my back, I'll just move this for a moment. And I hope this isn't bothering the mic. I have my backpack. So the backpack would be like this and I'm carrying all the things with me. Um, I also have my suitcase and you can tell that this is not loaded, but it would be with all my clothing and sweaters. So this would exactly go with me on board, hopefully if there's enough room. Um, and this is how I travel. I do not carry, no matter how long we go for, anything further or bigger suitcase at all. This is the max that it gets, even if we're away for five or six weeks, um, which we have done. And I've lived out of the suitcase in here. And the key is washing clothes as we're away. I'll get into that in a second. But we're gonna go through what I would have in my backpack. So I'm just gonna take off this oh and this if you wish to know is called the day off bag yes um again not sponsored just i believe in this great little independent company in the backpack um i would have on the top 
of my uh, pouch. Sorry, I think I hit my mic. My apologies. Um, are my sunglasses because I don't want those to get wrecked. And then of course they're in a somewhat hard-ish case to be protected. And that's often the only thing I would have here. Um, I wouldn't have my wallet here because it lives on my back. So that's why I think the fanny pack is a great option for me because it's on my front. Um, it's really secure, as secure as I think anything can get. And of course I will wear that fanny pack throughout my travels, um, as I would in Toronto, walking around in the backpack, because this would be living with me in the seat in front of me. I would store or stow my uh, suitcase overhead, and then that gets forgotten. Um, and in here, this is where I have all my goodies. So for a long flight or even not, um, I have access to everything, and I've tried to make it as simple as I can for myself in this. I, of course, hold my knitting project that I'm going to be knitting on well on the plane. I'm going to talk about all the knitting goodies. Um, I, of course, hold more knitting goodness. We're going to go over this. Don't you worry, because she's going to get quite a bit of time. Um, I carry a water bottle with me overseas. I find, obviously, this portable, potable water in most places that we travel. Um, and this helps us as we're hiking, we're out for the day. And then I don't have to stress about dehydration, especially when it's 30 plus sometimes in parts of Europe, which I don't think we have to worry where we're going in Norway. We will be fine, but I always bring a water bottle. Um, and then of course you can fill it up at the airport. Uh, I bring my toiletries bag. I bring an additional, uh, this, this is like, I would call it my, my flight bag and I, or, or my flight zippy and I'll go over exactly what's in here and how I plan that. Um, I also have of course my liquids that make it easily accessible. Um, I would probably switch out the plastic bag that I have uh, and switch it to the one liter max uh, bags or I think it's like a one quart bag uh, that hosts all my liquids so that can be easily separated as we're going through security and checked. Um, I do bring my knitting journal with me and you probably might think that this would be kind of a, I don't know, luxury item, which it is because it's, it's heavy and uh, it takes up space. But for me, this is essential because I'm writing things down as I'm knitting and knitting is such a big part of, I think my life in general, but especially while I travel. So I do want to have this on me to refer to all my notes. Um, in a pinch, I will take pictures of parts of what I need. Um, I bring my e-reader of course so I can do reading on flight and in the hotel room and that's pretty much it. I mean when I'm actually going this thing's going to be full. Um, it's going to host other parts of clothing that's big and bulky and might not necessarily fit into my suitcase but in general that's what I have in there. This would also host of course um, sorry my running shoes. Running shoes would be brought with me and because these are so honking big, um, I do tend to put them in my backpack instead of my suitcase because the suitcase hosts all my clothes and those take up space. So that's it. Um, okay, let's get into the, the, the goodies that I brought. So I'm just gonna put the backpack on the side and I have switched actually. Um, from uh, like a L.L. Bean, I'm gonna get it actually, just so you can see an L.L. Bean bag, hold on. Okay, this is a bag I actually used to travel with as my personal item bag with my suitcase. Um, it's huge and can fit tons of stuff. It's really great for a lot of reasons and really not great. Here's where I switched out from this kind of bag. It is totally open um, and when loaded up can be really heavy and annoying because then you always have one hand that has this bag and then the other hand has your suitcase. Um, so even though I like to have this bag while we're away and I can use it as we're walking around as a day bag, not the best. So I have switched over to a backpack so that my hands are free. I feel like overall the aesthetic isn't really there, but at least it's black and it goes with the suitcase. Um, the justification as well for a backpack is this can double as a day bag um, for when we're doing hikes and things and so it's just easier 
there we go. There's the, there's the backpack. Okay, we are gonna get into um, some of the odds and sods of what I'm bringing. So maybe we'll just go over liquids really quickly. Um, I don't think anything is groundbreaking. Sorry for the zippy noises. But um, if it's been a while since you've traveled or you know, you're not really comfortable with bringing liquids, hopefully the little tips and tricks I have might help. So for example, um, I have bought, purchased years ago, just little containers. These are from Nelgene. If you know the Nelgene water bottle company, they have these little plastic containers that are quite inexpensive. They last forever and you can fill them up with whatever liquid you want. Um, it allows you to use the things that you're already using at home, for example, hair gel, and then you don't have to bring your massive hair gel with you, but you still have that item that you're using every day as you're away, um, so a lot less volume and weight that you're bringing. And then of course, because it's under 100 milliliters total, um, you can totally bring this on board with you. I label everything as well, so that if asked, <laughs> a clear gel, a moisturizer, a liquid, um, I can quickly share what it is. Um, I also have as an alternative to this kind of thing, because I have a couple of these things as we go. Um, I have these little guys. These were from a natural health food store. Uh, there's labeling on the front as well. Um, they're glass, so they're a little heavier, but that's an option and it's something that I travel with as well. Um, even things that are as simple as picking a travel option for something you already use. I reuse these and have filled these up a number of times with different cleanser that, for my taste of whatever I'm, I'm using. I think the light changed, I hope it's okay. Um, and uh, of course samples. So anything that I might use in a one-off situation that can be used as a travel thing. These come in, you know, variety of things. Like maybe you get them in the mail. This came with like the Sephora birthday gift. I'm bringing that. If I use it, great. If I don't, that's fine. It can even go in the garbage there. Um, the other key thing that I always bring, especially in the summer, is sunscreen. Uh, this is just a mini facial sunscreen. Uh, I used to bring facial sunscreen and a whole body sunscreen. If I was doing a beach vacation, that still might be the case. It's not for this um, to go to Norway, so I'm bringing just a small facial sunscreen. If we need body sunscreen, we buy it while we're there, and then we don't have to worry. Um, and one more liquid item that I want to share with you is this. These are the little like sample packs of the rinse free wool wash. I'm going to be doing knitting while I'm away. This is a nice kind of luxury item that I'm going to bring with me that, you know, could serve as a possible like emergency wash if I need to for any woolly items I'm bringing or if I want to block while I'm away. Um, I've never used it while well, we've gone, obviously, but could be a great option. And uh, especially if you're doing um, a longer trip, there we are. So those are the liquids. Um, what I'm bringing on board with me, and this would live with me in front of my seat, is what I would call like my little like flight pack. So this I try to keep all together, and this offers anything that I might need within the flight that I don't even have to go into my backpack for. So, whoop, there we are. Um, so we have a hair tie, essential as a girl that wears her hair up almost every day. Uh, we have some AirPods that I have, but I'm also bringing, and I didn't do this last time, and I wish I had of, two other sets of earphones, like actual, like, wired earphones. Um, this goes for two reasons. One is the charge, depending how far or how long you're flying in and out of the airport, this might not always work for you. So we have these. Um, the wires, again, if you're a knitter, which you are because you're here, can be a pain as you're knitting. However, it's still, it offers that option if you're listening to music or having a podcast. This, if this fails, 
you have these in case. Um, I have obviously the ones that head into the phone with the connector there. I have like the old school ports that can go into the airport um, seat usually to listen because I don't want to be stuck not having anything to listen to. So I bring the whole, you know, mirage of everything here. Um, then I have an emergency hand cream because the flights are dry and gross. So there we are. That's the hand cream. I need a place to put these. Hold on. Um, I also have in here a lip balm. This is essential for me. I wear lip balm every single day, every single minute. I need the glide on my lip at all times. So this is getting brought. And FYI, this is my absolute favorite lip balm of life. Uh, this is the Trader Joe lip balm and it's discontinued. It breaks my heart. Uh, virtuoso. If you know of a lip balm that's anything as good as this gorgeous lip balm that I have been using forever from Trader Joe, please let me know. I have hoarded many packs. I'm down to my last four. <laughs> So I'm trying to use it very sparsely as I go. And I've already started trying to find another lip balm, but never as close. Um, this also has, of course, my chargers. So it would be the charger for my AirPods, charger for my phone. I have an e-reader charger here and they would be wrapped up hopefully a little nicer. Uh, so basically it's all like the wiry bits, um, but again, you know, if things need charging, they're all right there, which is super convenient. Um, I have a face mask for sleeping <laughs> or just try to get some rest. I wear this actually every night, period, um, in the city because she's bright, um, but this is essential for travel for me, not only for the flight, but for sleeping in a whole new bed. Um, because you don't know how dark or how bright things are going to be. Uh, this is silk, all natural silk. You're not supposed to wash this apparently or dry it. I do both and I do it every week and it's strong. I mean, as people that know and understand natural fibers, this is totally doable um, and has lasted forever. I have many, but <laughs> this is one. Another thing that I'm bringing are um, hopefully somewhat noise canceling um, ear plugs. Um, I purchased these about a month ago. Um, we didn't have air conditioning on in the condo uh, because it's, you know, manned by the building. And so we had the windows open. We have heaps of construction that go on all the time and it was awful. Um, so I purchased these. I have used the foam um, earplugs in the past and they hurt my ears so much. I have a very small ear, ear canal um, and not comfortable. So these are a different, again, I've purchased these, a uh, different brand. They're, um, they're called Happy Ears. They're very comfortable. They're a different kind of uh, ear plug that I believe are silicone. They're washable, they're reusable, all these things. I'm trying to show you carefully. They're kind of like mushroom-like. Um, but they don't cancel, from my experience, um, sound like the foam uh, earplugs. Anyway, give them a try if you wish. Let me know if you have any questions, but uh, not sponsored. So there you go. Uh, so those are the little bits and bobs that I bring on board with me um, for every flight. Then, I just don't want to miss those things. Um, yeah, we'll go over, for example, my knitting that I would bring with me. I would probably pack, I'm probably going to pack two projects as I go. This is one of them. And they would each get a project bag. Uh, this would live in my backpack because I might want the change as I'm going through airports and different flights. Um, I wouldn't pack it in my suitcase ever just because often this would be pretty light as well. And so... I probably want my lighter things in my backpack than my suitcase. Um, so I'm just showing you some of the yarn that I was sharing already that I'm gonna bring, which is the yarn is going back to its home, to the motherland of Norway. This is a Norwegian yarn, Tinda by Hillesvog. I purchased this at the Knitting Loft, but I'm showing this because <clears throat> um, I've balled up, of course, a skein. Um, I've also done like a micro swatch. Don't judge the size of the swatch. Um, and I would only bring the yarn balled up 
period. I would never bring it in a skein because I don't have a yarn swift that I would bring with me for an international travel or a trip. So they would all get balled up like this. Um, what I have done as well in here with my project bag is I have the barber cords. Uh, I use these all the time for putting stitches on hold for a sleeve, for example, for trying on. These are essential period for me to bring as I travel. Um, I also have put in my project bag knitting needles. Sorry, gosh, that's probably very loud. Sorry. Um, knitting needles that are this size that I need um, with cables uh, in the project bag. So it's super easy to just like pull out and start knitting as you are traveling. Um, I'm just going to start throwing this back in here so it's sorted. Within the bag, I also have put in little safety pins. Um, those can act as stitch markers as you're going. I also usually put on some emergency um, stitch markers, like the, the round ones on here, that again, as I'm traveling, I can use as I go. But what I've done is I put together a little case so that the case lives in here as well. And the case holds, <laughs> you're gonna have more stitch markers because we lose these things like crazy especially on a flight. I don't know what it is and I don't know if this is also you. So interesting to find out if it is. As I'm knitting, this happens in the car, this happens in the plane. I find these things grow springs and they just boing, they just fly off. And I mean, I'm sure I probably <laughs> hit people on the head or something with them before. I don't know, no one's ever looked, but they just, they fly and then they're gone. So of course I'm bringing heaps of these. And uh, yeah, within this as well. So this is a, uh, oops, I wanna be careful. This is a old Lululemon gift card like holder. They used to give these away all the time when you would get gift cards. Um, I don't know if they do anymore and I don't think they do. I haven't really shopped there in a while. Um, but I mean, this could be any, you could make this if you want, like make it prettier. Um, within this, I have all of my little goodies, sorry, that come with my interchangeable needle set. So it would be the stitch stoppers, if you can see that. It is the little T-pins, and I bring a couple of those just in case. I hope you can see, sorry, I have no, I need more hands. Um, of course, an emergency stitch, uh, sorry, place marker and a tapestry needle. I only bring one. I mean, this is something that I feel will be okay, I think, um, because I'm trying to travel minimally. So we'll see, <laughs> minimally. And then, you know, it'll, it'll come to the day where I'll actually start putting this together to pack and it. She's not gonna be as minimal. Um, I want to share with you, uh, oh, I didn't even, my goodness, this is so silly. And yet another little thing that I feel makes a big difference, toothpaste, like a little, these are what the ones you get from the dentist. I always pop a couple of those into my liquids bag. They are liquid, um, but always make sure, and I think it depends where you're traveling out of, um, but make sure that you're always checking what the limitations or travel restrictions are to bring anything on. We're talking knitting needles, we're talking liquids and gels, Often um, I'm finding on international travel, leaving from Toronto Pearson, uh, you are looking at liquid restriction of, again, one liter bag it can be totally full of liquids and gels. Um, and each package or container of liquids and gels cannot exceed 100 milliliters. But uh, again, super double check everything. Um, what I wanted to show in my overnight bag, I would have like makeup and things, are, uh, is this. This is um, like an anti-chafe stick. It classifies as a solid. I'll show you, it looks like deodorant. Um, I use this on my run, so I put it on areas where I would chafe, where my skin rubs, and if I didn't have it, it would like cut, rub, burn, scab. Um, but I also bring this for travel because of hiking. So if I'm wearing shorts, I'll put this between my legs or maybe like 
you know, under my underarm if I'm wearing a tank top, not likely, um, but that's classified as a solid, so that comes with me, which is an easy bring. Um, I also have silly things. <laughs> Maybe you're gonna judge, and that's okay. Maybe this is you, because you're crafty too. Um, I bring ribbon for my hair. I find I really need a variety of things to enjoy what I'm wearing, if that makes sense. I really love aesthetic in general. I love clothing and putting clothing together in colors. When I'm away for a period of time and I have a very limited amount of clothing that I can mix and match, I bring silly little things that might give me that extra pop of fun or color or play. So with ribbon, it takes hardly any weight. They're super obviously compressible and uh, just give me something to play with for when I'm super bored of wearing the same blouse for like, you know, the third day in a row kind of thing. Um, I also, that being said, somewhere, oh yeah, it's here. I bring silly things. So I bring um, like little play earrings that I've been really into lately that just help me, again, kind of enjoy my outfits a little more so usually for like what I would classify as like real jewelry so like any of the real metals or whatever I would probably only bring like one pair and I would wear them on the flight with me but then I have these silly ones that you know I can just wear again just to bounce up the outfit and make it a little more fun. These are all earrings from my mother. Um, I was sharing in the past from the 80s, from her like 80s collection. Uh, these are from a maker actually in, um, I wanna say Owen Sound. I don't even know the company. She was a small maker that I found at one of a kind show that reminded me of the 80s earrings. If I lost these, like no offense to her, she, you know, it's fun, it's fun stuff. I wouldn't be devastated. If I, if I lost my real earrings, I'd be very sad. There's so much meaning behind them, right? And um, yeah, value. Okay, so that's that. Uh, and so this, all this stuff that would live in the backpack. I wanna go over some other little tips and tricks that I bring with me that would classify as either clothing or would live in my suitcase and I will share why. Then I want to share some of my knits I'm bringing because that's just fun. Okay, I'm gonna bring this over here. Um, what I do, I often will try to bring resistance bands. Um, if you're into working out of fitness or not, maybe you want to get started. Um, I always bring some things with me. I've become, especially over pandemic, really capable, um, and this is partly massively due to the fact that gyms were shut down for a very long time and so had to become really independent with workouts and creative with workouts. Um, part of that was resistance band training. So these bands are literally just like rubber bands. If you haven't already seen them, you can probably get them at any kind of fitness store, at the gym, at a physio, and they don't weigh a lot, they don't take up a lot of room, and yet you can do a lot of different things with them. So I usually travel with a couple of these, just in case, just in case there isn't you know, a wide variety of equipment at the gym. Sometimes the places that we stay at the accommodation doesn't even have a gym or no equipment. I don't have to do a hotel workout. This, this helps. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna bring this resistance band only because it's bigger, um, but this also, um, it's a big band, like it's a whole, you know, big uh, body weight, uh, sorry, resistance band, but um, I sometimes travel with it. This is the lightest option, lightest weight band, um, but this offers heaps of options. Like I could, I could work out for a week doing plus doing different workout and different exercises every day just with these things um, and body weight. So um, these for sure will get brought. This I'm not sure yet, but if I have room, it will. Then um, I usually as well for doing a longer trip, I bring a laundry bag. Um, this is of course for laundry as we're on the go, because again, we only travel with um, a suitcase, a small little rolly carry-on. So I bring this because when we do laundry and we're away, I don't want everything mixing. Um, I wanna put my delicates in my delicate bag. This can also offer that luxury item that you can bring 
where if you are gonna block something that you're making uh, wool wise, this can be helpful because I will pick up my say sweater that I've blocked in my travel uh, rinse free soap. I plop it into this bag and then I can squish it so that I'm not worrying about felting it and wringing out an item um, so that that gets brought and it again weighs next to nothing. Even if we don't do laundry well away, it's nice just to have in case, in case, and doesn't take a tap, take up room so I don't have guilt for bringing it. Um, another thing that I bring with me on almost every vacation that is warmer or in the warmer months is a cotton bandana. You can get this, I think, like vintage, like 50 cents. This is from my mother from the 90s, I wanna say, and always fun colors. This can be, for me, just a cover-up for the neck because I often wear blouses if you haven't noticed already. So I don't wanna get extra sun on my chest. Sometimes I try to avoid wearing sunscreen totally all over my body. So this, I just fold up and it can cover the chest area. What I like also doing on the hikes that we do, depending on the weather, if it's really hot, I'll soak this under the water, like under cool water, wring it out, and then I'll just fold it up. I'll just show you like in two seconds. We'll, we'll do some pretend. Um, I'll roll it, put it around my neck, and it'll offer cooling. Um, I also do this when it's really hot, even on a run. Um, and it doesn't rub, which is weird because I don't think we shift around a lot as we're running or hiking with our necks. And so this offers no chafing, but a cooling effect. And because it's cotton, it really holds the water and against our necks can cool us down in a really efficient way and doesn't offer a lot of weight again to our, our suitcases. So that's, I always travel with one of those. The next item that I always travel with and will be traveling with, of course, is a bathing suit. Um, I bring a bathing suit usually anywhere we go, even if it's cool or hotter, you never know. There are sauna experiences in Oslo that I'm so excited and I have already signed up for a floating sauna experience as by one of the viewers has said and had visited Norway, as, as a few of you have reached out, which is so lovely to say what you've really loved, what you would do again, what you didn't do, but would love to have done. And so there were a couple people that mentioned the saunas, of course. One in particular said it was one of the items or activities that she had wanted to do was a floating sauna in Oslo. Her family wasn't keen and that was her one regret, which is so terrible for her and I'm so sorry. So I am saunaing solo. The love of my life was not keen on a public sauna or a communal experience. I'm fine with it. So I'm gonna sauna with, you know, I don't know, eight to 10 of my new besties as we're in Oslo. So bathing suit gets to go and tinier, the better for travel. I don't know better for everyone else, but you know, for this girl, we go for it because it's our body and that's, that's okay. Um, next up, I bring a silk scarf. This has, again, a variety of purposes for me. It offers no weight, um, but again, natural fiber. You can wear it for days and it's totally fine. This offers warmth um, as well for the evenings if you wish, or a little like zhuzhing up of your outfit. Again, I want it to be a little more, you know, spicy with the aesthetic and the color. Um, you may find out in the future that I've brought very neutral outfits with me this time, um, because again, the experience that we're gonna be having in Norway. So adding pops of color in small but fun ways to keep it still exciting as we go. Next I have a jacket that I often travel with, especially um, when we're going overseas, which is my rain jacket. This jacket was an investment from the beginning. It's a massive, I'll show you quickly. It's a massive rain jacket that I bought when I was working outside like 24 hours a day and uh, it covers so much, like you can barely, it's almost to my knees. Uh, it has a hood and she rains quite a bit where we're going. Uh, we are going to Bergen, which is the, apparently the, goodness, the city that receives the most rain in Europe. So we are ready for the rain. 
and that's okay. That's gonna be part of the experience. So I'm gonna stay nice and dry. The It's a Gore-Tex jacket, uh, so it's very lightweight. It doesn't get sticky and sweaty underneath, which is amazing. I bought it in, I think, two sizes too big for me on purpose, so I can fit all of my woolly bits if I wish underneath, so it can offer dry on the outside, and I can fit a lot underneath. I can even fit like my fanny pack underneath of that huge coat because it's almost like a poncho. So I'm hearing a lot of sounds from cars, so I hope you can't. Uh, the next thing I bring is a, um, what's it called, puffy jacket. They call it a down sweater. This is an old version, and I'm bringing my old one because I find I'm not, it's, it's almost for me better to bring the older options um, because, you know, again, if things get wrecked, or lost, sadly. I'm not gonna be devastated. Definite wear, I've had it repatched and restuffed, and uh, it's just great. This weighs next to nothing, and it fits into the pocket. Actually, I can push it in itself um, to become almost like a little, like, scrunched up pack that offers extra warmth. That usually comes with me as well, just in case it gets chilly in the nighttime, which it is, so I'm prepared above and beyond just the woolly bits. Um, I think that is it for my extra bits. I want to share my woolly bits now with you of what I'm what I'm bringing with me. So the first item is of course a pair of woolly socks. These are a pair that I purchased from the Soxophone player. Um, he is a maker in Owen Sound, Ontario that makes, he has it, He's a, he's a shepherd, I believe, and has his own flock. Um, but in addition, he has an antique sock machine. I've actually spoken about him before and have purchased another pair of his socks. I don't knit socks on a tight gauge or fingering, so this is really lovely for me to wear and to have purchased from him because I would never make something like this and these just strike so much joy. Um, these I believe were a their commercial sock yarn. I can't remember the name of them, um, but I mean, just wonderful. So for bedtime, these offer a lot of warmth but fun too. So these are the only bedtime socks I'm bringing. If I have to wash them while I'm away, I will. No big deal, one pair of bedtime socks. I'm bringing the Sophie scarf. This was a scarf that I shared in one of my last traditional podcast updates. Uh, it is really lightweight. It's gonna offer a lot of warmth and a pop of color. So instead of bringing a huge shawl or something, which I have in the past, uh, this will have to be as good as it gets. And I figured with all the layers that I'm bringing, this is a good option. Um, really compact and lightweight. Sophie scarf, there we go. Uh, by Petite Knit, of course, you know that. Uh, the next item, Wooly Bits, is the Baggy Hue, also Petite Knit, and um, this is, I didn't share what this was knit on. This was a uh, Dijopin, uh, which is a Scottish yarn, love it. This is knit with Felix, this was a yarn by La Bien Aimée, uh, Two Strands Held Double. I knit this actually last summer while on the road with Love My Life, and it's just a really simple construction of, I believe it was a top-up construction with decreases at the crown. And I actually wear this all the time. It's nice and bright, uh, so it's great for, you know, being out, running, hiking. Um, again, super lightweight. You, I often fold it up on the brim, uh, but this, I am bringing a toque. Uh, I think it's gonna get really chilly at night and I'm gonna feel happy that I brought it. Sometimes I even like it as a style piece at night if I'm wearing all the dark colors and then I have a cute little bright hat on. That's for fun. It doesn't take up a lot of room. I'm justifying it at this point. We'll see if it makes the cutoff, but I think it will. As for my sweaters, here's what I'm deciding on. I have three. I have three because one will get worn on the plane with me for the outfit that I'm gonna choose. Two will go and live in my suitcase and or my backpack. I'm justifying three total. I wanna bring like 20, but we are being very limited. This is as bright and crazy as we're getting. I'm bringing my Sorel uh, pullover sweater. This is a sweater by Pine, Woolen Pine. 
It's um, a construction I've talked about before and I've talked about this exact sweater. It's top down, it's knit inside out, and they're dip stitches that create this beautiful um, textured yoke. It's a really fun sweater. I made it three quarter length sleeve. I've done two strands of Ramaphenol held double. This is partially why I'm chosen to bring this sweater. I'm trying to be very mindful um, about the choices I'm making, of course, in all the knitting, um, because Ramaphenol is a Norwegian yarn brand. Um, it's quite rustic, but at this point, I've, I think I've you know worn it a bit so it's, it's soft and or soft enough I should say uh, you know I like the rustics uh, completely modified the pattern of course to fit the gauge but I figured this would be the pop of color uh, to have I like that it's three-quarter length sleeve so my blouses will show through but it's also a really cozy layer because it is the Roma Fienel held double so it's gonna be nice and warm it has a higher neck as well where it's going to be cozy so it's it's a fun piece it actually goes with quite a bit i find this color in this like dark peach light coral really goes with quite a bit you'd be surprised i'm i'm surprised so it's going to go with a lot of things that i'm bringing my other two sweaters that i'm bringing are very neutral which is why i have all the different color pops um, that you saw that i'm going to be bringing because i need them to go with everything else that i'm wearing uh, this you will have seen many times and this is just this has got to be my favorite this is the wild posy sweater by melody hoffman uh, top down construction with lace and textured yoke stitches it's just such a win i love everything about it. I wouldn't change anything. It was just a fabulous knit and it's exceptional to wear. I feel for the fit on my body with the dimensions doesn't get any better. Uh, so I'm bringing this because I feel it is, uh, it, it'll go with everything and it's very warm. This is two strands held double of Plutalopi uh, by Istex, which is an unspun yarn. And uh, yeah, we'll offer a lot of warmth um, as we're around chilly temps. This is it. And even so, even having this over the shoulders can offer warmth, cuteness, just a little extra fun. Um, so that is the wild posy that's getting brought as well. The last sweater is my super tried and true sweater that I travel, I think, almost everywhere with. This is the Anchor Sweater by Petite Knit. Uh, this is top down construction of uh, basically one by one ribbing as you go with increases in the yoke. This is also a Icelandic yarn by Estex. This is Let Loppy, which is their spun one ply yarn. Look at me, it's like wannabe spinner here. Um, and this has just, I mean, this this gets so much wear. I said that the Well Posy is my favorite sweater and she is. This is this is definitely a favorite. This is maybe sharing first place favorite sweaters because it just goes with everything. It's a somewhat, you could say like boring sweater because I do like sweaters that are fun colors and fun techniques and stuff. But this for me is a perfect travel sweater. It's warm because of the, again, the quality of the Icelandic wool, the color being neutral, again, not my favorite, goes with everything. Like you can't argue that neutrals are great because they are, you know? Um, I just washed it, so she's like extra like ready to go and just have a good play overseas. Um, yeah, Anchor Sweater by Petite Knit. Really excited about my sweater choices and I think, I think they're gonna be great. I think by the choices I'm making of what I'm bringing with me, it's gonna be great. Um, I will go back to say that I am bringing a maximum of two projects with me uh, as we leave, which is I think the first time in history since I've started knitting of only bringing two projects, no extra wool, no extra anything, because I don't, I don't need to. I'm going to the land of wool. And so I'm trying to be really like pumping the brakes to realize like we will be purchasing plenty of yarn. If I really need a new cast on, we can cast on with something as we're there. All right, I think that's it. I don't think I've missed anything. Um, I hope 
that you found some interest, some of the tips and tricks helpful for you um, as you travel, if it's, you know, even a road trip in a car, if it's a flight, um, I do highly, highly, highly suggest, of course, um, if you are flying, double check everything with the liquids bit with sharp objects. I want to plot, I forgot to mention, um, I don't even know if I'm gonna be traveling with my full kit of interchangeable needles. Um, in Mexico, they took this from me as they had changed, I believe changed, uh, their criteria of sharp objects to a maximum of six centimeters in length, which is like, bang, like nothing. Um, and these obviously, far exceed that that um, that length of sharp objects. I usually, when I do travel with my interchangeables, I take out the honking huge ones, the tens. Uh, that's the biggest I have in my interchangeables because they do look scary. I don't know. I might just take maybe maybe I will only take fixed. I haven't decided yet. I also look at me like getting into things again. I'm so sorry, goodness. Um, I bring craft scissors. These were like a dollar from the dollar store because if those get taken, no big deal. And uh, I mean, it's easy to rip our yarn often with our hands. <sighs> yes, so check for sure the um, sharp objects uh, limitation for onboard flights. Otherwise, if you're checking your baggage, chuck it into your suitcase and it'll be no big deal because that lives under the plane and you're you're golden. I'm not, I'm not sure about this yet for me. Okay. So I will go back to say, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I hope you found the tips and tricks, tips and tricks helpful. Um, if you have additional tips and tricks that you would like to share with our knitting community, please do so in the comments. Uh, let me know what you do to help you travel even better and enjoy your time as you travel more. Uh, let us know what you do to experience joy in your knitting as you travel, because I feel for me always, it's that coupling of travel plus knitting, which are two of my very favorite things ever. And it just brings so much joy. If you like today's video, I ask that you like and subscribe to the channel. If you're finding even more to go and click down below into the show notes, where you are going to find all the show notes that I've put together with links. Um, but you can click on the Ko-Fi account and prepare a donation for myself. So thank you very much to people that have already done that. Uh, I hope you find the biggest joy in your knitting today. Perhaps you're spinning, whatever other fiber art or craft that you love to do in your time. Um, and I hope that you're traveling. And even if it's, you know, you're traveling to the cafe around the corner, I hope you enjoyed that. Until next time, take care.